Hello there, I'm Chris Erickson, and I want you to vote for me in 2022 for your new United States Senator for Vermont. It's time to have government of the people, by the people, and for the people, rather than government micromanaging and interfering with our personal and business lives. Over the years, Lake Champlain has gotten more polluted. Let's clean it up. Education standards in public schools for children have been lowered over the years. Let's smarten them up. The F-35 fighter jets in Burlington, Vermont are zooming around and hurting people's ears. Let's move them out to a more remote county and build a new base. Let's repeal and strike off the books federal laws which get in your way and hurt your personal life and your business. I'll help you to live happier and a more prosperous life in Vermont. I worked as a cook when I was a teenager at Walter Smith's Pig Farm in Plainfield, Vermont while I was a student at Goddard College. I went on to University of Massachusetts and graduated from there. I also studied law for a while at UCLA and I have two paralegal diplomas, but I'm not a former U.S. attorney. I don't prosecute people. We don't need any more former prosecutors prosecuting people. Now, please vote for me, Chris Erickson, for United States Senator, and every bill I sign on to in the U.S. Congress, Senate, I will make certain there's some pork in there for Vermont. Thank you very much. Vote for me, Chris Erickson, 2022, for United States Senator for Vermont. Thank you. Hello, I'm Chris Erickson, and I live in the state of Vermont. The state of Vermont would like to allow businesses to sell marijuana, but marijuana is still illegal under federal law. Now, some of the problems I see with marijuana being illegal under federal law is that if you have a marijuana conviction and you pl apply for federally subsidized housing, in some states you can be turned down. If you have a marijuana conviction and you apply for food stamps in some states, you can be turned down. If you have a marijuana conviction in some states, if you apply for loans and grants for college so you can get a job, you could be turned down. So because marijuana is illegal under federal law, more people are homeless, malnourished, and unemployed or underemployed. Let's make marijuana legal under federal law. Vote for me, Chris Erickson, 2022. Thank you. Hello, I'm Chris Erickson, and I'm here to tell you how we're going to get our money to pay for education for kids for trade technical school, college, and university. We pay our tax dollars to the IRS. Then the United States Congress votes to give that money to the Pentagon. Then the Pentagon hands out that money for research, design, and development and they allow whoever did the research, design, and development to own the patents. That's where the money is. The money is in the patent ownership. That means you own the rights to that invention. The problem is these all end up in the hands of the defense contractors. The defense contractors then sell the new inventions, the missiles and the weapons and the jets to foreign countries, to our allies, and they make all the profit. They make trillions and trillions of dollars. Well, we, the taxpayer, paid for the research, design, and development, so we should own half of the patent, and we should get 50% of the profits. 50% of those trillions of dollars should go back to the taxpayers. And one good place to put that money would be in education, for trade technical school, for college, and for university. No kid should have to pay for college education in this day and age. All those defense contractors need engineers. They need people in who have studied electronics. They need all kinds of trade technical people to build the jets that they're going to sell to foreign countries. They need people who have studied physics, chemistry, all kinds of engineering. They need people to be educated and they should pay for it 
it by returning to us our right to our share of the profits. We deserve a right to 50% of the profits from the defense contractors because we, the taxpayers, paid for the research, design, and development. Thank you very much. My name is Chris Erickson. Vote for me in 2022. Thank you. Hello, I'm Chris Erickson, and I would like you all to read Michael Crichton's book. The title is Next. This is about how our taxpayer dollars are being used to experiment on animals and do the research, design, and development to invent new prescription drugs, which are then patented. And then whoever owns the patent makes all the money. And they sell the new prescription drugs worldwide and they make a fortune. They make trillions of dollars. Now, in Michael Crichton's book, he says, we need to rescind the Bay Dole Act of 1980, B-A-Y-H-D-O-L-E, the Bay Dole Act. Congress decided that the discoveries made within universities were not being made widely available to benefit the public. So to move things along, it passed a law permitting university researchers to sell their discoveries for their own profit even when that research had been funded by taxpayer money. As a result of this legislation, most science professors now have corporate ties either to companies they have started or to other biotech companies. We have to put a stop to this. We need ROI, return on investment. When our taxpayer dollars are used for research, design, and development, the taxpayers deserve to own half the patent, and we have a right to ROI, return on investment. Let's get some of our money back. Let's get half of it back. They're making billions and billions and trillions of dollars, these pharmaceutical companies, where we, the taxpayers, paid for the research, design, and development. Let's get our money back. Hello, I'm Chris Erickson, and I'd like to explain to you how I feel that the defense contractors in the United States and the U.S. Congress, House, and Senate are committing money laundering, in my opinion. Now, you pay your tax dollars, they go to the IRS, and then the U.S. Congress votes to send them to the Pentagon. Then the Pentagon gives out your money for the benefit of the defense contractors. The defense contractors then give some of your money to their political action committees, who then deposit some of your money into the political campaign accounts of the incumbent elected officials currently serving in the U.S. Congress, House, and Senate. So I call that money laundering because your tax dollars have come full circle and have ended up in the political campaign war chests of the members of the United States Congress, House, and Senate. Let's run by that again. You pay your tax dollars. They go to the IRS. The U.S. Congress votes to send them to the Pentagon. The Pentagon spends your tax dollars. They send them out for the benefit of the defense contractors. The defense contractors take some of your tax dollars that they receive from the Pentagon and deposit them into their political action committees. The political action committees donate some of your tax dollars to members who are currently serving in the United States Congress, House, and Senate. And then they spend your tax dollars for their re-election campaigns. So you get the same old boys and girls running over and over and over again because they get this con scheme going on. I call that money laundering when your taxpayer dollars end up, without you knowing it, into the political campaign accounts of the existing serving members of the U.S. Congress, House, and Senate. I call that money laundering. Shame on them. Hello, I'm Chris Erickson, and I want to explain to you how I believe some members of the United States Congress, House, and Senate, in conjunction with the pharmaceutical industry, commit money laundering. Now, you pay your tax dollars to the IRS. The U.S. Congress votes to give your tax dollars to the NIH, the National Institute of Health. They give them out for the benefit of the pharmaceutical companies. The pharmaceutical companies give some of your tax dollars to their political action committees. The political action committees give your tax dollars to the incumbent elected 
officials who are running for re-election so they can get some more money from you. This is money laundering in my opinion. When your tax dollars go from you to the IRS and then the U.S. Congress votes to spend them by giving them to the NIH, the National Institute of Health, which gives them out for the benefit of the pharmaceutical industry, which gives some of your taxpayer dollars to political action committees, which gives that money to incumbent elected officials in the House and Senate of the United States Congress for their re-election campaigns. Your tax dollars have ended up in the pockets of the incumbent U.S. Senators and members of the U.S. House of Representatives. I call that money laundering. Shame on them.